Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Titus. Now in this video, I'm here to talk to you guys about your plant anxieties and how to manage it. Now when we're talking about plant anxiety, what are some of those things that I mean? So some of the sources of why you might be anxious about your plants could include sometimes thinking about not having enough time to water your plants, sometimes it's about killing your rare plants because they're generally really expensive and hard to maintain. Some of them could include pests because obviously when you're looking after plants that's something that eventually will come. Um, and if not and you're quarantining your plants quite well then it might not be an issue for you but some of the other things could also include being anxious about buying too much plants. Okay in which case I did make a previous video to this talking about how to control your plant addiction if you want to watch that video, I will link that down below. Um, and just the general overall health of your plants is some of the things that people might get anxious of. So hopefully after watching this video, it will help your plant anxieties get under control. And some of these things that I've mentioned are definitely some of the common things that has been mentioned in the plant community and or the people that I've um, known who also has tons and tons of plants. So let's get started. So my first tip to reduce your plant anxiety is stop buying rare and expensive plants. Okay, so if you're going to buy a rare plant, do know that there are some cheaper options out there and, and sometimes you might even be lucky to score one of the rare plants being hidden um, as part of the common plants as well. So once you get into the world of plants, oftentimes one of the things that you want to just have a piece of is obviously a plant that not a lot of people may own. However, a lot of people desire and oftentimes those plants are quite pricey and expensive, but something that comes along with it that people aren't really aware of is that oftentimes they are quite pricey and expensive. So one of the um, popular plants at the moment, um, and I think it's been several years now, is the um, Thai Constellation um, and obviously the more even more expensive one um, from this is the Monstera Albo, um, which I don't have. But this type of Monstera is super duper duper um, pricey already, I thought. Um, I think that was two years ago, it was around 180. Now I think for a plant like this with four leaves, it's probably gonna cost up to 400 to 500 dollars at times depending on how much um, you know the person buying is willing to pay. However, I have heard a lot of people actually buying those really big um, bush, bushy ones that are worth like $500 and they actually have ended up killing them which is not really good for um, your mental health especially if you spent that much. Before I used to wonder why people would buy console um, games worth uh, $300 and I thought that was already really expensive and games worth $80 but you know me buying a plant sometimes I justify by saying it will grow it can propagate and you can sell it and it's true but if you don't know how to look after that plant properly and you buy something really really pricey it's only going to take a toll on your mental health when you end up killing that plant and it just goes to waste okay so um, stop buying rare and expensive plants um, Again, with rare plants, there are some that are quite low care. However, a lot of them are quite high care and um, it, it, it's just a lot of stress trying to, <laughs> to make sure that they actually thrive and live. Okay, so if you don't want to stress with plants, stop buying rare plants altogether. All right, my next tip is about starting to reduce the amount of plants that you have within your space. Okay, whether that's selling your plants, rearranging them, putting them in another place, or gifting them to other people, it's probably a good time to actually start reducing the amount of plants in your house if you're noticing there is a bit too much. So yeah, there you go. Um, sell your plants, give them away um, if ever they're getting a bit out of hand in your house. The next tip is about detoxing, okay, from buying tons and tons of plants. Again, it's really nice to sometimes just walk in a nursery or your big box store to just find out what plants they have, admire the beauty of those plants, and then leave. Okay, sometimes um, buying tons and tons of plants can really burn your pockets. And if you're not careful with that, 
again, that can be a source of anxiety, especially if you don't know where you're going to um, find the money to pay your bills. Okay, so um, detox from buying plants if ever um, that's an issue for you. My next tip is about keeping an eye on pests. Okay, so when pests are still there earlier on, um, they're quite easy to treat. However, if you leave it too late, sometimes um, it's already at that stage where the plant is probably an, on the verge of dying. And often that will probably have already spread to your other plants as well, which can be really, really, really annoying because that's how pests work. So if you watch your plants and keep an eye on early signs, such as browning on different edges of the leaf, it could be fungus, it could be pests, it could be, um, you know, whatever else is happening in there. So just keep an eye on those um, leaves and chop them off or get rid of them, trim your plants earlier on, check if there's any root rot, just to avoid you guys having a bit of anxiety in relation to pests. Because if you've dealt with them, and one of the most annoying ones that I've dealt with in the past is spider mites, they're very um, annoying and hard to get rid of. Um, another one is fungus nets. Okay, I'm planning to make a future video related to that. So do keep an eye on um, how to control your fungus nets because I know that's one of the sources of people's anxiety. How do you actually, you know, get rid of fungus nets? So just keep an eye on pests and treat them earlier on before they actually get out of hand. And then the last tip is about letting your plants just live. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So normal plants generally shed the bottom layer of their leaves. They turn yellow, brown, or die off. And that's completely normal. Okay, so sometimes when that happens, people often overwater. Um, so just make sure that you don't overwater. Make sure that you look for signs of your plant getting dry so that you can actually get prompted on, on when to water. And sometimes it's just good to ignore your plants. The more that you ignore them, the better they thrive, obviously. Don't um, ignore them too long, otherwise they might just die off one day and you didn't even know they've died already. Okay, and that's pretty much it guys. So I hope that you guys are able to put those things into action to help with your plant anxiety. If you guys have anything to add, do please let me know down in the comments down below. If you guys found this useful, then please go ahead and click that like button. If you do want to see me make more video contents like this, and if you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys on the next video. Until then, goodbye and God bless.